One of the best days at What Three Words for me was we woke up and it was during the Afghanistan rescues and a guy had tweeted basically saying something along the lines of, I don't know who invented What Three Words and for what purpose, but it saved so many lives in Afghanistan. And that thing of, we were just asleep, right? We were just asleep and overnight, these incredible uh, rescue workers were using the technology for free to save people's lives. I remember I signed with McKinsey, which was a big deal uh, back then. Um, as a consultant, you know, parents really happy. Uh, I worked very hard for it, but I think once you are obsessed with something, there was just no way uh, we couldn't pursue it. Um, so the early days were very scrappy. We had no money, like, at all. Yeah, more than 50% of our client base is female. More than 50% of audiences are female. You know, more than 50% of share of wallet in the home is female-owned um, and driven. So. We need to have female perspectives and voices, not only on screen, but at board level, that reflect what's going on in the world. I do think entrepreneurialism isn't, you either have it or you don't. It's it's sort of a behavior that you can grow. You acquire more power as a woman and you're somebody that's forthright and has an opinion, has to make decisions, right, that have consequences. Some men, not all men, some men, they really don't like that. And they can express that in ways that make them more aggressive, potentially borderline threatening, etc. which is really interesting because um, you start to, to look at that dynamic and you say, okay, this is, this is you really struggling with a woman being in that position. Because what I'm saying is no different to what my male predecessor might have said. And I think this is often quite misunderstood around mission-driven companies. You also don't change the world, or at least I haven't figured out how to do it, like nine to five, um, that just is not gonna, gonna happen. Brace yourself. <laughs> it's going to be longer and harder than you expect. I think that it's easy to look in, as you said, from the outside and go, wow, what an adventure. And it is an adventure. Oh my goodness, it's an adventure. But I think the important thing if you're doing a startup journey is to go, am I going to be okay with this if it fails? Covid came along and basically wiped us out for um, for 10 months. And that was a real low when our revenue dropped overnight um, by by half and then quarter again. So, you know, those, those eight months were just about laying low and keeping the runway and keeping morale and trying not to get rid of anyone. We were just sitting in the office, you know, I was crying because you know, we lost everything before it even started um, and we closed down our computers. We went outside, we went for a walk and just talked about how we should announce the bankruptcy to the world. And I managed to sort of prove the concept just with a spreadsheet and getting one law firm to, to come through me when they needed paralegals. And that um, gave me the confidence to fundraise. And then off the back of that fundraise, I then could sort of leave, leave my career as a lawyer and um, and really kind of focus on, on, on growing Flex Legal. I think there's so many limitations put on women um, in this industry. And I think that you have to really adopt a mindset where you are going to challenge that as you move forward. And so for me, I always had a sense of fearlessness as I kind of progressed through my career. And I was determined to push myself outside of my comfort zone go and attend events, go and meet new people, go and send that email, go and create that opportunity. The amount of women investing, uh, the pay gap, uh, the gap um, that arises after having a child, um, even the amount of money that goes to female founders, it's not, we're not seeing big moves. Especially if you are a natural, ambitious person who wants to have massive impact in the world, it's okay, there is time, life is long. And so be patient along the journey as well. I think it's really important to sell your business when there's still a lot of growth left, that you really shouldn't be looking to sell it at its absolute peak because a buyer wants to get further value.